So I'd like to discuss labor at the turn of the century, the labor history in the United States. And there's a significant labor history in the United States, and in many respects, it's a hidden history. It's a history that folks aren't too familiar with today but it's something that was quite impactful at the time and still has a legacy today, even if we don't recognize it. An era of strikes, an era of workplace reform, and we're in something of a post-labor era today where these issues perhaps aren't on the front mind of everybody in the workplace, but they certainly were at this period. It was a period of great industrialization for the United States, and so how did workers, the key question is, how did workers react to that? And why did workers react the way they did? And what became of that? When they did react, what happened? So there is a long history of a labor movement in the United States. The core element of a labor movement is a labor union. And there are different kinds of labor unions that might be considered moderate to radical. And we'll see what that means a little later in the presentation, a moderate union versus a radical union. This was an era of significant violence. It was an era of significant number of strikes. Labor issues dominated the news from about 1890 right up to 1930s, 1940s. And if you look closely at the news today, you'll see that labor and workplace issues, unions, strikes, pay, hours worked, all that, all those related issues still dominate today. So where should we start with the labor movement? Well, we could start with Karl Marx. Karl Marx is a German philosopher, and Karl Marx's name gets used a lot, gets tagged to a lot of political and social and economic issues, but it's simple enough to say that Karl Marx developed several ideas around um, communism, socialism, around labor, around work, and what work meant, and he critiqued capitalism. So Karl Marx gets a lot of blame for events that would happen long after he died, he gets a lot of credit for what happened long after he died. It's simple enough to say that Karl Marx is probably the most significant economist in history, but he's just that. He was a philosopher and economist. He didn't found any movements, and in fact, movements drew their inspiration from Karl Marx. And Karl Marx's most famous ideas that people would later draw on criticized capitalism, talked about communism, talked about how much value a worker contributed, and how the upper classes, the higher classes, would take that value and exploit it. So he saw workers being exploited by the upper classes, workers in the lower classes, owners and capitalists in the upper classes. And he saw that this wouldn't last. This upper and lower class divide can't last forever, and eventually the lower classes will organize and there will be a communist revolution. That was his prediction in the Communist Manifesto. And his famous expression is, workers of the world unite, you have nothing to lose but your chains. Workers of the world unite, you have nothing to lose but your chains. And we'll see how labor movements and unions were inspired by this statement. So here are some of the ideas of Karl Marx, upper class, lower class. They're always in conflict, and the workers must organize to overthrow the upper classes, and then there would be a classless society. Now, that's a kind of a radical view, and as we said, in the American labor movement, movement of unions and working people, they weren't always radical movements. Some were, and some were not. And so we had the American Socialist Party that brought these labor movements into politics. We don't see many socialist parties today. We saw some of this discussion in the election of 2016, where Bernie, Senator Bernie Sanders talked a lot about working people's issues. And that was quite a change from uh, decades where labor movements didn't have a strong say at the pinnacle of politics. They were always somewhat in the background. Well, one of the most famous um, labor movement figures to run in political circles long before Bernie Sanders was Eugene Debs. He ran for president in 1912, and he garnered about 6 million votes in the 1912 um, election. And he was the leading labor figure during this period around 1900 right up to 1920. The most radical movement at the time and the one that caught a lot of headlines was the industrial workers of the world. They took Karl Marx's message to heart, the industrial workers of the world took Karl Marx's message to heart and said that they could foment a revolution and eventually workers would own the means of production. The means of production should not be owned by the upper classes and organization radical movements, strikes, 
would get a fair deal for the workers. And after all, the workers should own the economy. The workers are the engine of the economy. We will not accept exploitation of workers. Not all unions agreed with them. Not all Americans agreed with them. And in many cases seen as an interfering radical group that brought a lot of trouble. And one of their most famous leaders was, um, one of the most famous figures was a guy called Joe Hill. Joe Hill is most remembered for being um, executed for a robbery, a murder committed during a robbery. Many of the Indust IWW industrial workers of the world thought he was innocent, and the case still divides opinion today. And he's also remembered in song. The most important, one of the most important things to remember about the labor movement, it had had a strong culture. This just, this wasn't just about um, getting a fair deal for workers. This wasn't just about trying to get extra wages and lower working hours. This was also a culture. Workers identified as a labor movement. This was their identity, whether they were Irish or German or American or whatever they felt, or men or women, they identified as brothers and sisters in the labor movement. And they had social clubs and they had newspapers and they also had songs. And the songs were a great way to connect with the ideas of the people in the labor movement. You, if you could look, look and listen to the songs online um, about Joe Hill, the songs written by Joe Hill, such as The Preacher and the Slave, Right down to today, the labor movement and ballad singers are very conscious of this musical legacy. And there's none, no more famous songwriter than Joe Hill, and there's no more famous song than the song Joe Hill about his death, um, his execution for um, murder. Of course, the song about Joe Hill says that he was framed on a murder charge. So it's quite an interesting story, Joe Hill of the IWW. And so moving on, we can see what labor wanted. And labor was successful. This is the other point in this era. Labor was successful in reforming the American workplace. Let's look at some of the things they did. They improved working conditions, improved working hours, improved safety. At several points in the 1890s and 1900s, hundreds of workers would die every week in unsafe conditions. And so the labor movement would advocate for safer conditions for workers because before that, there was no motivation, no interest on the part of the upper classes, the owners. And so you can see why, why the ideas of Karl Marx would resonate. Well, of course we're being exploited. After all, we don't even have safe working conditions. Of course we're being exploited. Our children have to work in factories. And the take home wage for a man or an individual at this time was not enough to rise above poverty. And so men and women, husbands and wives and children would all have to work in the factories. So child labor was something that politicians at the time were forced to reform because of the organization of the labor movement. A simple achievement for the labor movement that took a long time, the elimination of child labor. And so what we see throughout the 1900s, 1910, 1911, is a series of strikes where labor is exerting its authority and attempting to get these reforms for child labor, to get these working hour, hours reformed, to get pay increases. And one of the most dramatic events of this period was the 1911 Triangle Shirtwaist Fire, where a, a shirtwaist, a shirt manufacturing textile factory in New York caught fire. And here we saw on full display the terrible conditions in which these women were forced to work in which there were no safety precautions, in which the women were crammed in this factory, and over a hundred would die jumping from a burning building in the center of New York. And this led to a lot of calls for reform during the period. It is another example of how horrendous the working conditions were at the time, how little um, the factory owners cared for the workers, and how desperate the workers were. A lot of young immigrant women who died in the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. And a huge reaction leading to safety reforms. Then the very next year, the, one of the most noted strikes in American history, the Bread and Roses strike in Lawrence, Massachusetts, that lasts for six months, where the workers are struggling um, to fight back against demands that they speed up production, that they work less hours and get less pay. As we said, they couldn't survive on that, so they go out on strike. The IWW comes in, 
and there are disputes between the strikers. There are disputes in the community of Lawrence, Massachusetts, and of course the big dispute between the workers themselves and the factory owners. And it goes on for about six months. A lot of violence, some deaths, some arson, the threat of starvation facing the workers, disputes between the unions, a really dramatic, dramatic story, the Bread and Roses strike in Lawrence in 1912. The issue is still debated today, most recent book published in, in 2012. And so um, eventually the strikers win out, the strikers last out, and they were able to get their demands that their hours are reduced and their pay is not reduced, and wages as essentially are increased. And then during the next 20 years or so, we see these strikes continue. We see a textile strike in New Bedford. We see sit-down strikes at the factories in Detroit, Michigan. And we see a reaction from owners. We see a reaction from the government pushing back. And we see a lot of this violence and controversy. All throughout, we get the great songs of labor as the labor movement's identity and culture is built up. And you still have that today in unionized labor, where they remember these struggles. And unions today will say, this is why we have safe working conditions. This is why we have weekends. This is why children are no longer um, forced into labor or families can support themselves. If they, they will say, thank a union, thank the great labor struggles of this era for the progress we have today. And so there's the legacy. It's going all the way back, starting with the ideas of Karl Marx, seeing the battles and reforms of the labor era right up to the legacy today. Does it still have a legacy? So you could ask yourself, is this a relevant issue today? Is workplace equity, our workplace struggles, our strikes still a significant issue today?